Welcome back, everyone. Ready for another deep dive? Always. Great. Today, we're um, we're going somewhere a little unexpected for a show like this. Where oh, else? Oh, okay. I like it already. Yeah, right. Now, I'm, I'm sure some of you are already familiar mm -hmm. with uh, with this place. We're talking about the Difed Triangle. Ah, yes. The Welsh Bermuda Triangle. Uh-huh. Right. It's got that same kind of mysterious vibe, right? I mean, yeah. You know, UFO sightings, ghost stories, people going missing. It's, uh, well, it's all very intriguing. It definitely captures the imagination. And the Difed Triangle, it's not just a recent phenomenon either. Really? Oh, yeah. We're talking centuries of folklore and legends associated with this region. Huh. I, well, I never would have guessed that. So we're talking more than just a few spoopy stories then. Oh, much more. We're talking about a place deeply rooted in Celtic mythology, where the lines between the real and the supernatural have always been a bit blurry. Okay, so paint me a picture here. What kind of uh, historical backdrop are we dealing with? Imagine a land where ancient burial sites are scattered across the countryside where the landscape is dotted with standing stones and remnants of ancient rituals. A place where the stories of fairies and magic weren't just stories, but a part of everyday life. Wow, okay, so you're saying this area has always been seen as a place where strange things happen? Absolutely. Yeah. It's almost as if the land itself is steeped in a kind of otherworldly energy. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely getting that vibe now. But let's get to the good stuff. What are people actually experiencing in the Difed Triangle today? Give us the rundown. Well, you name it. We've got UFO sightings, everything from strange lights in the sky to detailed accounts of, uh, of well, classic flying the saucers. Oh, wow. Then there are the ghost sightings, apparitions appearing in old castles and abandoned villages, often linked to local legends or historical events. And then perhaps the most unsettling, the disappearances. Yeah, that's what always gets me, the idea of someone just vanishing without a trace. It's uh, it's pretty terrifying. Absolutely. And the Dyfed Triangle has had its fair share of those cases. Wow. Okay. So it really is like a greatest hits of the paranormal all in one place. But is there anything that ties all these different phenomena together? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Is this just a random collection of strange events? Or is there something unique about the Dyfed Triangle itself that makes it a hotbed for the unexplained? All right, so let's let's dive into the theories. What are some of the leading explanations for all this weirdness? Well, you've got two main camps, the naturalists and the paranormalists. Right, that makes sense. So what are the naturalists saying? What kind of natural phenomena could be causing these experiences? They point to things like the region's unique geography and geology. The Dyfed Triangle has this dramatic coastline, lots of hills and valleys, and there's some speculation that certain minerals in the ground could create electromagnetic anomalies. Okay, hold on. Electromagnetic anomalies. How could that explain ghosts or UFOs? Well, some research suggests that certain types of electromagnetic fields can affect human perception, even cause hallucinations or disorientation. Hmm. I see. So maybe some of these sightings aren't actually what they seem. It's just people's brains being tricked. That's one possibility. But, you know, there are plenty of people who aren't buying the natural explanations. Right, the paranormalists. What's their take on the Dyfed Triangle? They believe that the Dyfed Triangle is a place where the veil between our world and the spirit world is thin. They point to the centuries of folklore and the ancient history of the region as evidence that this has always been a place where the boundaries of reality are a little blurred. Okay, so it's like the history of the region is almost feeding into these modern experiences. Exactly. And the presence of ancient burial sites, sacred grounds, and places associated with ancient rituals, it all adds to this idea that the Dyfed Triangle is a place with a powerful connection to the other side. Okay, I'm, I'm starting to understand why this place is such a magnet for paranormal investigation. It's not just about the individual events. It's about the whole context, the history, the energy of the place itself. And that's what makes the Dyfed Triangle so fascinating. We're not just dealing with a few isolated incidents. We're dealing with a place where the very fabric of reality seems to be in question. All right, that's a great place to pause for now. When we come back, let's, um, let's dive into some of the most famous cases and see if we can unravel this mystery a little further. Okay, so so let's talk about some of these cases that that really put the Dyfed Triangle on the map. What what are we talking about here? Well, you got to start with the 1970s. The 70s. What was so special about the 70s? That's when the Dyfed Triangle really blew up on the paranormal scene. There was this global surge in UFO interest, and all of a sudden, this little corner of Wales was in the spotlight. Really? So like. Was it just a case of everyone being obsessed with UFOs at the time? Well, there were hundreds of reported sightings in the Dyfed Triangle during that decade. 
I mean, it wasn't just a few isolated incidents. It was like a wave of activity, everything from lights in the sky to full-blown UFO encounters. Wow. So what were people seeing? Like classic flying saucers, little green men? Uh-huh. No little green men that I know of. But there were some pretty detailed descriptions of disc-shaped objects, sometimes hovering, sometimes moving erratically. And it wasn't just individuals. There were multiple witnesses to some of these events. Wow. Okay, that's pretty compelling. Were any of these cases investigated? I mean, was there any actual evidence found? Oh, absolutely. A lot of these cases were looked into by both local authorities and independent researchers. Some even made national news. So what did they find? Unfortunately, most of the investigations hit dead ends. Lots of intriguing stories, but not a lot of hard evidence to back them up. So it's like a classic UFO mystery. Lots of smoke, but no fire. Pretty much. But the lack of concrete evidence didn't stop people from speculating. In fact, it probably just added to the mystery. Right. I mean, that's human nature, isn't it? The less we know, the more our imaginations run wild. But it wasn't just UFOs in the Dyfed Triangle, right? You mentioned disappearances, too. Those always creep me out. Yeah, those are definitely the most unsettling cases. And the Dyfed Triangle has its fair share of unsolved missing person cases. Like what, what kind of cases are we talking about? Well, there's the one that always comes up, the disappearance of that little girl in Fish Guard back in the 70s. Oh, yeah. What happened? She was playing near her home one afternoon, and then poof, gone. Just yeah. Vanished into thin air. Wow. Did they ever find her? Nope. Massive searches, no trace, nothing. Man, that's heartbreaking. And I imagine those kinds of stories really fuel the theories about supernatural forces at work in the Dyfed Triangle. But you also mentioned ghost sightings. What about those? Are there any haunted hotspots in the area? Oh, the Dyfed Triangle is full of ghost stories. Practically every town and village has its own local legends and haunted locations, old castles, abandoned buildings, you name it. Like, like, give me an example. Well, there's this old manor house near Haverford West that's supposed to be haunted by the ghost of a former owner. She met... A pretty gruesome end, apparently. And people say they've seen her wandering the halls at night, all dressed in white. Classic ghost story stuff. Ooh, spooky. Do people think her ghost is connected to the other weird stuff happening in the Dyfed Triangle? That's the question, isn't it? Are these ghost stories just that? Stories? Or are they somehow connected to the UFO sightings and the disappearances? Is there something about the Dyfed Triangle that attracts or creates these paranormal phenomena? So it's like the history of the place is literally haunting it. Maybe. Think about all the layers of history in the Dyfed Triangle. Battles, shipwrecks, ancient rituals, all sorts of things that could leave behind some kind of energy or imprint on the land. That's a pretty wild thought, but how do we go about investigating something like that? I mean, how do you study a ghost? And that's a great question. It brings us to the heart of the matter. The attempts to understand the Dyfed Triangle from a scientific perspective. What happens when researchers try to apply their methods to the paranormal? Okay, so, so we've got all these amazing stories and these compelling theories, but has anyone actually been able to figure out what's going on in the Dyfed Triangle? Well, that's where it gets tricky. Trying to study the paranormal with traditional scientific methods is, uh, well, it's a challenge. Yeah, I can imagine. It's not like you can put a ghost in a test tube. Right. It's hard to control for variables to replicate events or even just to agree on what counts as evidence when you're dealing with the paranormal. So what have scientists and researchers been able to find out about the Dyfed Triangle? There have been some studies, mostly focusing on the region's geology and electromagnetic properties. Some researchers have looked into whether certain rock formations or underground water systems could create those electromagnetic anomalies we talked about. What did they find? The results have been mostly inconclusive. There's just not enough data to say for sure whether these natural factors are playing a role in the paranormal reports. So it's still a big mystery then? Pretty much. But that doesn't mean people aren't trying to solve it. Aside from the scientists, there are lots of paranormal investigators who are really passionate about getting to the bottom of things in the Dyfed Triangle. Yeah, the ghost hunters. What kind of work are they doing? They do a lot of field work, interviewing witnesses, collecting stories and using various tools and techniques to try to detect or document paranormal activity. They're often the ones on the front lines, so to speak, gathering information and trying to piece together the puzzle. So we've got scientists looking for natural explanations, and we've got paranormal investigators searching for evidence of the supernatural. It seems like the Dyfed Triangle attracts people from all walks of life. It does. I think it speaks to a certain... Um, 
a certain human need to understand the unknown, to explore the mysteries that lie beyond our everyday experience? I know. I'm definitely feeling that pull. It's like the Difed Triangle is this giant question mark daring us to figure it out. Exactly. And whether you believe in ghosts and UFOs or you're just fascinated by a good mystery, the Difed Triangle has something to offer. It's a place that makes you question your assumptions, makes you wonder if maybe, just maybe, there's more to reality than we currently understand. And that's a pretty powerful thought, isn't it? The idea that there might be things out there that we can't explain that challenge our understanding of the world. It's both exciting and a little bit scary at the same time. Definitely. It's a reminder that even in our modern scientific age, there are still mysteries out there. Things that make us wonder and keep us searching for answers. Well, I think that's a great note to end on, the Difed Triangle. A place of mystery, wonder, and endless possibilities. It's a reminder to keep exploring, to keep asking questions, and to never lose that sense of curiosity about the world around us. Absolutely. Who knows what secrets are waiting to be uncovered in the Difed Triangle or what other mysteries lie hidden in the corners of our world. That's the beauty of it all. So to our listeners, we say, keep that spirit of adventure alive. Keep searching for answers, keep exploring the unknown, and keep listening to the deep dive. Until next time, happy exploring.